Hello again boys and girls, so today we're going to be doing in literacy a little bit of work on description and the reason we're doing this is because the unit we're looking at is to do with diary entries. We're going to be looking at James and the Giant Peach to help us to uh, write a diary entry by the end of this unit um, and today we're going to be describing what we can see because obviously that might go as part of a diary entry. So today our objective is to describe a setting and to be successful we're going to see if we can use adjectives to describe our setting. We're going to see if we can use our, set, our senses to describe in more detail. So rather than what we can see, we can think about maybe what we can hear, smell uh, and feel as well. We're going to see if we can write in simple and compound sentences and then see if we can possibly use some subordinated conjunctions to write in more complex sentences. So I've got a picture here and this is an image of what somebody thinks that um, Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker's house might look like. So I want you to have a think to yourself. How does this house look? Do you think that it looks quite inviting? Do you think that people might want to come and visit this house? Or do you think it might be kind of the opposite? Do you think that it's similar to the Twits house? I feel that it is quite similar. It's not exactly the same. We can see that there's windows, whereas in the Twits house, they didn't have any windows because they didn't want anyone looking in. But looking at it, the house looks quite crooked, doesn't it? So have a think. What words might you use to describe this house? What I'd like you to do is have a look at the picture, pause the video, and see if you can think of some, as many words as you possibly can to describe this house. On the next slide, I'll show you some of the words I've come up with, and maybe you can steal some of those if you want those as well. Okay, hopefully you've got your list now of adjectives that you've come up with. I'm going to show you my list, and if any of them are uh, on your list as well, then give them a tick. And if there are any of the words which you really like, you can possibly write them down as we're going through them. So here's my list of adjectives. I've got creepy, mm. shadowy. You can see that the house is casting a shadow over here. It does look quite dangerous, doesn't it? It looks like there's sort of spiky branches, which could be quite dangerous. Isolated. If it's isolated, it means it's all by itself. Quite mysterious. Ooh. Dreadful. It looks absolutely dreadful. Dreadful is a word that means like horrible. Terrifying if it's really scary. I've already used this word before. It looks quite crooked. It's not straight, is it? It's quite bent as it goes up. Uninviting. I asked you whether it was inviting, whether people wanted to come to it. But if it's the opposite of that, we use un in front of it. Uninviting means it's not very nice to go to. Evil, scary and gloomy. If you want to steal any of those words to possibly use in your writing today, then pause the video now and write them down. Okay, so what I've done is I've actually written my own description of the setting using some of those words and maybe some other words as well uh, to describe what you could see if you were looking at that house from a distance. So, my description says, In the middle of nowhere lies the house of Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker. In the spooky night, I can see the haunted house on a creepy, shadowy hill. The house has dangerous people inside of it, except for one, James. The house is isolated, haunted and dreadful. It's an old and mysterious house which looks weird and terrifying. Since there are only two evil people and one nice person, it is a dark and gloomy house. The place is so mysterious that it looks like it contains traps. It is also dangerous and crooked. The ground feels like a dangerous toxic hill. A creepy old murderous house in the middle of nowhere. How do you think that description was? Do you think that I used some really lovely, lovely adjectives there to describe it? Do you think maybe there's anything that I could do to change it to make it better? As I was reading it, I noticed in the last paragraph, I used the word dangerous and crooked. And then I said the ground feels like a dangerous toxic hill. I used that word dangerous more than once. Sometimes that can be quite effective if you use the same word more than once. But if I could vary it and try and use something different, maybe I could try and do that. So let's go back to my adjective list. Did I use any of those words? Did I not use any of those words? I don't think I used the word uninviting actually in my text. So let's go back and edit and change that to one of those. So it also looks, let's change the dangerous here to uninviting. It also is also uninviting and crooked. The ground feels like a dangerous toxic hill. That's much better, isn't it? I can already see just by changing that one word, it's made my writing more exciting. So I hope you liked my writing, but now the challenge is up to you. I'd like you to see if you could write your own setting description of Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker's house using your senses. Here's the picture to inspire you. I want you to use your imagination. 
use some of the words that you've come up with and maybe some other words as well to describe what you could see, what you could hear, what you might be able to smell, maybe how you'd feel being in that place as well. So once you've finished that, I'd like to come back here and I'd like to go and uh, do your open, invest, open uh, assessment. Okay, so today our objective was to write a description. Were you able to use adjectives to describe? If you weren't able to use many good adjectives, maybe that could be your next step. Could you maybe create some similes using adjectives? So thinking about the words that you've used to describe it, could you compare it to something else? That's something we looked at in the past and maybe you could do that to up-level your writing next time. Could you use more appropriate descriptive language? So making sure you're using words which are really suited to that thing that you're describing. And could we use a range of sentences to interest the reader? Obviously, if you're using a, um, a series of simple sentences, it does make your writing quite basic. Whereas if you're using conjunctions, it can make it a little bit more interesting for the reader. Maybe that's something you could work on next time. I'm looking forward to seeing some of your work on DB Primary. Remember, you can either take a photo of it and upload it, or you can type it into your DB Primary blog, or you can just add it to the two RF files or to your own files as well.